Color range is found under the keying category, and this is an older effect for pulling a color key, like a green screen or a blue screen, but it's designed to work with screens that were basically unevenly lit. And you can even use it with multiple color backgrounds, but that would be a very specific use case. It can actually work in three different color spaces lab, YUV, and RGB. If you don't know what that means, it's okay. You probably wanna be using key light to pull your color key anyway, but it's three different ways for After Effects to interpret color. Lab and YUV both have much more color information than RGB. Changing the color space doesn't change any of these controls, but you'll notice that each one of them have three different labels on them, L, Y, R, for the first letter of lab, YUV, and RGB, LYR. Then we have AUG, BV, and B. Again, each corresponding to the letters in these three color spaces. The way this effect works is by using these color eyedroppers right here. What we're seeing here in this preview is a matte thumbnail, what it's using to shape the transparency of this layer. I'm using my favorite clip of Shia LaBeouf for this example. I'm just gonna pick a frame right here where he's not moving too much, then grab this first eyedropper, which is the key color, and choose the green screen right behind where he is. Now that removes some of the green screen, but there's still a lot left. And this is showing just how unevenly lit the background is. I could increase the fuzziness to pull more of that green out, but it's spilling into his skin more and more. This footage really wasn't shot all that well, so there is quite a bit of green spill on him, but I'm gonna change that back down to 20 because I have two more eyedroppers here, a eyedropper plus and an eyedropper minus. This is going to allow me to expand the range of colors that are included in the key. And notice that these numbers have updated. Using these eyedroppers are basically just shortcuts to modifying these sliders individually. So if I grab this plus and I click right here, that's gonna get rid of a lot more of my colors by modifying all of these sliders at once. Then I'll just click that plus one more time and grab this green up here, and my background is pretty much gone now. I can switch to my alpha mode on my comp viewer to see my alpha mat. It is pretty crisp and clear. There's a little bit of chatter going on in the background, so I might wanna grab that plus and grab some of that just to clean it up even a little bit further. But then I'll switch back to my RGB mode and see that it's actually doing a pretty decent job. I can turn on that transparency grid and it's a pretty clean key. It definitely needs some work to clean up to refine that outside edge, but pretty much with any green screen key, that's a given. Now this eyedropper minus button allows me to select a range of colors that I don't want to key out. So the, nothing is really getting keyed out that shouldn't be at this point, but let's say I wanna choose right here his skin color to make sure that doesn't get keyed out then we'll update the mat. Now that brought in some more of this green over here, so I don't necessarily wanna do that. I'll probably just grab my plus and remove that one more time. I'll undo and redo, and there's just barely any difference there, and really no difference inside of my mat. So I don't think that that's worth adjusting. From here, I could again adjust that fuzziness to bring more or less of that green in to my selection, but that's pretty much where I would leave the color range effect and then I would throw on maybe an advanced spill suppressor to get rid of that green color around the outside edge of Shia, as well as go into my matte category, throw on a simple choker or a matte choker to have more advanced controls and just choke that matte ever so slightly so we can get rid of that highlighted edge all around his silhouette. But with relatively few steps, we have a very decent key using the color range effect. Now I'm gonna turn off advanced spill suppressor and simple choker, reset the effect and go to the YUV color space. And the process is exactly the same. I'm gonna pick a green color, add to that range until all of this color is removed, getting rid of all of this green, increase or decrease the fuzziness, turn on advanced spill suppressor, and then add a little bit of a choke to that matte. And again, we have a different looking result. Now this particular color space, I think is doing a pretty good job of the semi-transparent pixels around the motion blur. It doesn't look all that great when you pause, but if you play it back, it's really not that bad. So I'm gonna label this one YUV, duplicate it, rename this one Lab, turn off the YUV, reset this effect one more time, and quickly just get back to where we were with Lab. I'll key out this green, add in more to my range, turn on that advanced bill suppressor and simple choker and compare the two. So we have YUV on the left and lab on the right. There's definitely more transparency in the lab version. I could play around with the fuzziness to try and bring some of that back, but it's just a different way of handling the same colors. One more time, I'll duplicate this, rename it RGB, reset the effect, turn off these two, 
switch it to RGB color mode, choose my green color, add to it, just continue refining this matte until I've got most of that green screen removed. Maybe turn up the fuzziness a little bit, turn advanced spill suppressor and simple choker back on, and then move this over to the right. And now I have three motivating shayas next to each other, all keyed out with different color spaces, producing different results. And clearly the RGB version, we're missing a lot of information there. So if I turn the fuzziness back too far, we're gonna get that green screen showing in. So that's a good side-by-side -side comparison of how each color space brings something different to the table. And why color range is worth knowing about because you can work in these other two color spaces that most other keying tools don't let you do. But that's everything you need to know about color range. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.